Alright guys, another Thursday, another Odyssey. Let's see what we've got this time. No boat, no problem. Okay, and it seems like a regular Odyssey. That's good, we need a break from last week's. Uh, easy maps. I don't remember what this map is, but it doesn't look too bad. Okay, what's this map? Oh, Spring Spring. Yeah, no, okay. So these are all very easy maps. So we've got no boat, no problem. Let's have a look at what rules there are for the maps. Hard standard, 4 to 70. Hard impoppable, 33 to 80. Hard double HP Moabs, 33 to 80. Medium standard, 44 to 90. And easy impoppable, 44 to 90. Okay, so we seem to uh, once again be starting later on in the rounds. So we're either starting on wave 4, 33, or 44. And if we're starting on 33, we get 9 grand. And if we're starting on 44, we get 21 grand to start off. Okay, so, and as the name suggests, all maps have water on it. And, uh, well, I'd say four out of the five maps are very suited towards water-based towers. Or maybe three of the five. So, Skates, Spring Spring, and Spice Islands, I think, are more water-based than in the loop and cubism. Cubism's more water than in the loop, of course. But, uh, yeah, let, let's let's move on to crew details. Seems like we can choose whoever we want, and we're allowed to choose everything that isn't boats and subs, by the looks of it. No banana farms as well. Is that the gist of it? No ice monkeys either, so you can't utilize the water at all by freezing it over and putting more monkeys on it. Okay, fair enough. So let's get into our choices. Ooh, we're only allowed 10 towers, and there can only be six different types of towers. So, what hero do we want? Oh, we are not actually able to use all heroes. We're missing two. We're not allowed to use Pat, because he can be placed on the water, and we're also not allowed to use Admiral Brickle, for most likely the same reason. Okay. Um, let's see here. I'm honestly tempted to go for a... <sighs> see, with, with, with the later rounds, we can start with whoever we want. Because we've got plenty of cash. So we could afford Churchill straight up. Adora, straight up. We could go for Benjamin if we want extra cash. I'm just trying to think of who would be best for... All these maps. And I mean, Sorta's pretty bloody dope. Like, if you can get Sorta up, then that'd be a fairly solid choice in my opinion. But she, like I expected, she did get nerfed since she came out. So she isn't as great as she once was, but she's still pretty damn good. Um, I think I'm going to choose Oban. Oban's always a good staple. Very solid staple. We want to use our free dart monkey from the monkey knowledge, if you have it. Uh, if not, then maybe just use use the one dart monkey to get a crossbow master. Uh, just, just to start off with, I'll have one dart monkey just until we can sort out what we want to use. Uh, planes, yes please. Or just singular plane. Ninja alchemist, beautiful way to start. You can have infinite ninjas. So that's also pretty handy. Uh, go for a village. You only need the one, really, if you're not playing extreme. And I think maybe a sniper to round things up. So we've got four more spots. And look at that. One, two, three. Ooh, and then another ninja. Four. Okay. I think that's honestly going to be our lineup. There's really not much more that we need. So let's just get into this. This one seems like it'll be a quick and easy odyssey. Or at least, should be. Should be a quick and easy odyssey. Start off with our boy Oban. Gonna put our boy the Dart Monkey right around here. And let's send it. We're gonna be here a while. Because it's uh Well, we're going to 70. What can you expect? But general gist of everything should be pretty pretty easy to manage. You still want your ninja alchemist combo straight away. 
if you can help it. Oban helps out with that even more. And as you can see, his ability is pretty goddamn good as well. I think the reason I like Oban is because he he sort of mimics a ninja. You know, his, his shots kind of chase after the balloons. It's got nice pierce. And overall, it's just a very solid tower in the early game. Alright, so then we'll get... You guys know the deal by now. Me and my alchemist combo. My ninjalk. Is that what I should call it? Ninjalk? Nin Lego Ninjago? Lego Ninja Alchemist combo? Um, but yeah, you guys know the deal by now. Start off with the ninja because the alchemist doesn't exactly have the best popping power in the world. At least not for the path we're going down. Get yourself up to sharp shurikens. And then you can either choose to go for the alchemist and start getting their upgrades, or stick with the ninja until you get double shot. And then, if you hold on just a second... My apologies! I was summoned to do some heavy lifting for my mother, and I just can't refuse that. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? Probably nothing I haven't said thousands of times before. So, just get your Ninja Alchemist combo and take it from there, as usual. And I think we're going to be doing that with most of these maps. Um, mainly going for either the Sniper Monkey, 5th tier bottom path crossed with the middle, or the Monkey Ace, 4th tier bottom path crossed with the top. And then we can potentially give it camera detection using the village. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much going to be the entire plan. We're going to use Ninja Alchemist to get us to the point where we can get a fifth tier of either the Dart Monkey, if you've got the free one you can place like I did, or fifth tier Sniper Monkey, because those are both very cheap options, and then eventually you can work your way up to a fourth tier Monkey Ace, or just go for that instead. That's also a pretty good damage dealer that can last you a while. It should work out well in your favour. But until then, uh, make sure you've got a hero that can pop leads, and then you can just focus on building up your ninja, or place your alchemist sooner than I have, and make sure to give him acidic mixture dip. But uh, you can't always rely on that, because sometimes the alchemist will be in his own little world, and will just completely forget to buff your ninja. And that happens a lot more than you think. A lot more often. There you go. Alright. We've got the ball rolling now. There's really not much more to say, because I've pretty much just explained the entire strategy I'm going to use to get through every single one of these odysseys. In fact, we probably don't even need Oban for a lot of this. And yes, even though the next few well, the next few maps, um, not Odysseys, the next few maps will, in fact, start us off further into the game with more money, I'm still going to place down a Ninja Alchemist just to get my foundations right. Because if you try and jump to a fifth tier and you end up coming short and then you've, you just put a whole bunch of different defense up, you won't have that baseline defense that you would have had if you started from the very start of the map. So, I'm just going to run it run it as safely as I can so that we can get through this Odyssey very easily and with a nice 50 trophies in our back pocket. Which I think will be a lovely addition. Alright. Stronger stim and faster throwing if you want to. I personally don't because it looks like he's only going to be buffing the ninja and so the buff will only have like a micro... a, a couple of milliseconds of downtime, at the very least. So it won't matter too much so long as he can't buff open accidentally. Which is the reason I placed him there. Alright, so up next we can pretty much choose which fifth tier we want to go to because this combo especially with Oban next to him, can last quite a while. Um, and still works pretty well on double HP Moabs. With double HP Moabs, you are going to have to have something like a little bit of extra damage. Uh, my little bit of extra damage is going to be uh, Oban's Brambles. But when we get to the double HP Moab maps, 
for the map. Um, so just be aware of that you might need a little bit, a little bit more damage using your your hero's ability, or maybe build up another tower in between then. But for now, we're probably going to go for our Dart Monkey. Why not? He's on the field. We'll get a Crossbow Master. Just because it's cheap and easy. And these guys can hold off until then. Now, it's very important that you uh, make sure that you definitely have the, the defensive power to pop Wave 63 completely. Now, there's a few ways to do this, and I've mentioned a few of them. You can get the Crossbow Master. You can get... Sometimes the Elite Defender does it if you cross it with a shrapnel shot, but you need to place it in a good spot, like maybe down here, just so that it can constantly spray the shrapnel down this starting line and just keep hitting more balloons behind it. Because if you place him in a crap spot, like up here, where the balloons are constantly either moving away and downwards, roughly, because, I mean, that's that's where they need to end up going. They need to go away from the sniper if he's placed up here and downwards towards the end of the map. Then you're going to have a pretty hard time getting those shrapnels to uh, be of much use. So if you have a good spot for your sniper and you give him an alchemist buff as well, then that could also help out. Um, or you can go for a monkey ace spectre. Obviously not the... Uh, Obviously not the 5th tier, it's a little bit expensive to uh, try and afford that before round 63. Um, I'm sure it's doable, but not without banana farms, it's not. So, we're just about at the crossbow master level, and you guys will see if you have not witnessed how amazing the crossbow master is against wave 63, you will, you will find out soon enough. Um, but yeah, there's a ton of ways of dealing with 63. Even going for like a Grandmaster Ninja would do it, but it, it, it does cut it a bit more close than uh, getting this Crossbow Master, as you'll see. Because Crossbow Master, we can afford like mid 50s at best, like early 60s at worst. So we're, we're not doing too bad here getting our Crossbow Master up and running. Got open second ability up and running now, and there's less than 20 rounds left. The balloons really don't stand much of a chance anymore, especially now that I'm gonna put this sniper down. Right here. Not that the balloons had a chance to begin with, but now they've got even less of a chance. And see, this is why. This is why I keep praising the Ninja Alchemist combo, as well as Oban, because even with our crossbow master back here. He's not actually dealing that much damage. He's only got 4,000 pops. And I know he's been down for less time and he hasn't had that upgrade for a while, but it just means that these guys are actually doing a decent enough job so that our crossbow master doesn't actually need to engage all that much. So there we go, now we're starting to get our sniper up and running. Just need to get that fully auto rifle. And will really be cooking with gas. Okay, and there it is. Much better. Look at that. So good. Anyway, we've got our first BFB now. Sniper's laying into him, already dealing a decent amount of damage. Ninja Alchemist finishes him off, and Crossbow Master cleans up. Ain't that just beautiful? You really don't need much more else. M much more else? You really don't need much else. It's uh, quite a beautiful little team we've chosen here. All perfect and play their role nicely. Now the reason I always pick a monkey ace and a sniper monkey these days is because you... Th there is always a good time to have infinite range whether it's just by flying around the map and attacking from above, or just straight up having the best sniper vision in the world. And being able to cross-map people like you're playing Call of Duty. You just can't go... You can't go wrong with infinite range. Or at least mostly infinite range. I know the sniper can get screwed over by... Uh, little barricades on the floor now, but... That's fine, because... For the most part, he's still got a really amazing range. 
on if you really want. Like, Pastor Throne is a little bit useless on the Alchemist if he's only buffing one person at a time. So you can just give him, like, stronger acid and perishing potions. Set him on strong so that he actually starts, uh, dealing a bit more damage, too. Might help out. Alright, but we're coming up to 70 here. Absolute cruise of a time. We might even be able to get the Elite Defender. Uh, I say might, because we're not... We don't have many rounds left. We might not even afford it in time. I think we will afford it in time, but it won't really have time to shine. If you know what I mean. Yeah, so we'll be able to get it this round. But it only really gets to show off this round and the next. And, and then we win. So, you know, not, not, a, not a bad thing that we win, but it uh, doesn't get to flex as hard. Real shame. I mean, it's already flexing pretty hard right now. So, I guess there's no shame in that. Pretty much just handling all of our problems at the moment. And there you go. That's the first map done. Let's go. Moving on. Who needs boats, right? Not us. Okay. Impoppable difficulty. No more mana shield. We still get the uh, spikes at the end of the track, though, which is a nice, nice little hint, or oh, hint, nice little bit of assistance if you do have that monkey knowledge upgrade. Gonna place open in the middle once again. Uh, we are going to place our free dart monkey probably up here, actually, just because this map is annoying if you place all your defense in the middle, because it takes ages for everything to get popped, because nothing's actually doing the popping up here. So... Once again, uh, we're going for the ninja. Now, we are going to be a little bit behind on the ninja alchemist, but in all honesty, ninja Kiwi is pretty good at uh, balancing out the uh, extra cash they give us. So that starting on this round with this amount of cash is roughly equivalent to if we started with just the regular amount of cash and on the regular round. So, as you can see, it's round 34 and we've almost got the last upgrade for Ninja Alchemist combo. So, it's it's quite proportionally accurate to what a, uh, a normal game would have been. In terms of the, uh, the cash you would have made. But, once again, starting off with Ninja Alchemist, greatest idea ever, we're already holding the line, so we know that we can... Uh, just continue our strategy from here per normal as, as usual per the norm uh, what, what, what else do they say um, you gotta you gotta follow the follow the quota what is it like something quota uh, the status quo that's it status quo keep it in check with the norm all right and then I think we'll actually go for a plane next on this map. We won't put it close enough to the alchemist to get a buff, but we will get it close enough to put a village somewhere there to help everybody out. So let's do this. We'll go for never miss. Because, I mean, who would want to? And there we go. Beautiful. And then we'll get rapid fire for more damage. And lots more darts for lots more damage. And we will be absolutely cruising. Absolutely cruising. Honestly, I don't expect there to be many uh, many people watching this. Just because this Odyssey is going to be a literal breeze. Like, you could literally turn, like the smallest desk fan at this Odyssey and it would fall over. Just because it seems really easy, to be honest. There's no no extra modifications. There's no custom rounds. There's no difficult maps. It's literally just enjoy and play five maps of BTD6. And honestly, I'm cool with that. Sometimes we need that. We need to have a little break where we can just get 50 trophies for free 
if we put in some time. I'm not going to say effort because this is this is quite cruisy. I'm not going to lie. Compared to all the other Odysseys we've had recently, this is a literal breeze. We could actually like stop paying attention and we might beat this Odyssey still. <laughs> uh, but seriously though, these Odysseys are quite fun, even if they are just uh, even if they are just a nice little nice little cruise, you know. No boat, no problem. This is true. Although saying that. I must admit, that Spring Spring map, that would probably be the most difficult map that we're versing. Just because there's two directions the balloons can take, and the water is, for the most part, surrounding the track. Whereas the land is sort of like a minimal thing. Like, Spice Islands is fine just because it's one track, and it loops around all the islands. Uh, but Spring Spring... A little bit more difficult, just because it loops separately on both sides of the island. And there's really not a lot of space on the smaller islands that it actually goes around. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think Spice Islands is going to be a little bit easier than Spring Spring on this Odyssey. Which is weird, because usually it's the other way around. But I guess if you're limited to no boats, no subs, then of course it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Alright. But to be expected, we are crushing this. And we'll be able to afford a Spectre soon. Another way to beat round 63 quite easily. Beautiful Spectre. In fact, I think we're going to do this on Spring Spring as well. Uh, just because I feel like the Sniper trying to take on Spring Spring by himself on, well, trying to take on Wave 63 by himself on Spring Spring, he's going to get switched up. He's going to swap from one side of the map to shooting at the other side of the map. Now, that won't delay him by that much, but it will decrease his damage output, and so getting something more efficient, like a Spectre or a Crossbow Master, Make sure if you do go for Crossbow Master that it's away from your Ninja Alchemist. Maybe have the Crossbow Master at the front and then your Ninja Alchemist at the back so that they can do a little bit of cleanup if they do miss it, or if the Crossbow Master misses anything. Alright, but here comes our Spectre. Hopefully is going to absolutely crush this map because that is what I am expecting. Expect no less from a plane of death. Alright, and yep, we're already taking down the BFB. Couple layers gone now. Three and four and five. Spectre. And this is pretty much GG right here. You no longer have to watch this video. The first two maps are done and thus the first episode is done. Uh, Episode 2 will be released tomorrow, as usual, on this channel. I did, at one point, attempt to do all five maps of the Odyssey in one video, and that was just really draining on me if I did get stuck at one point, just because it would be like a three, maybe four hour long video that I'd have to edit, and then process, and then upload, and that was just a pain. So I've been splitting them into two parts. First two maps on the first part, Last three maps on the last part, and uh, a lot of you guys will just just watch like the first map, or the first uh, first part, just to get an idea of what to do or how the Odyssey works. This one, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. There's no there's no hidden tricks with the custom rounds. There's no balloon modifications. Nobody's like quadrupling the Moab health at all. It's all pretty cruisy, just the different game modes that we're used to. You can get the MIB if you really want, but it doesn't change too much, at least in this situation. Um, but yeah, you've, you've literally won now. The second you get the Spectre, you've probably won. Now that is a lie, because the Spectre does not do so well against DDTs, but... If you get the Spectre and you've got Oban on your team, 
and you've got his second ability, then you've won. Because this only goes up to round 90, and Oban can solo round 90 with just the click of his second ability. So make sure to save that instead of using it on round 89 and screwing yourself over like I have done in the past. Alright. But here we go. Last 10 rounds. I'm just going to play around with these penguins. We might sink this village at some point for fun. And, uh... And then that'll be it. I really wish you could, like, chop down these trees somehow. Like you spam click it. Or, like, you click on... If, if these were decorative instead of, like, removing them to get more water, you, like, click on one of the houses and a lumberjack monkey comes out. And you just, like, point and click towards the trees and then he goes and chops them down. I think that'd be cool. And then, like, a little sapling would be in its place. That'd be cute. Penguins. One. Where are the other two? Come on. Where are they? Did they did they even come out? Did they come back up? I didn't even see them come up. That's worrying, because I'm pretty sure they need to breathe. Let's try this again. Maybe I just didn't see it. Oh, there's one. Must have come up from another opening in the ice. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, and if you are worried in any way, shape, or form when you're at this point in time, just, just place down your sniper. I mean, it'll it'll save you. Obviously, it can't handle everything, but it's definitely a good little assistant if you're trying to save up. So just, just remember that you can't go straight for 5th tiers, you need to have some sort of foundation. My foundation is usually Ninja Alchemist plus Oban. Uh, Oban can handle quite a few rounds by himself, as you guys saw in the first map. And Ninja Alchemist can sort of take off from there, use Oban as a sort of stepping stool to uh, jump off of and take out the rest of the balloons from the rounds after that. And then you can pick and choose what fifth tier you want and go get it. Because you've earned it. Alright. Round 79. In fact, we might even try and speed this up a little bit more. If we can. We'll, we'll, we'll tempt fate. We'll do a little fate temptation here by uh, removing some of our defense and buying a crossbow master. Just trying to speed things up. This should be done in no time. Shouldn't be a problem. And there you go. Alright. This is part one done. No boat, no problem. Part one done. Part two, like I said, coming out tomorrow, we'll deal with the double HP Moabs and the uh, medium standard and easy and poppable levels. So thank you guys so much for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care guys.